winter of 64, 65, I returned to New York from England. While I had been in England, I had heard Spencer Davis group with Steve Winwood's belly song, folk songs, but with drums, electric bass, you know, very powerful. And I talked to Paul Rothschild and I said, this thing is happening in England. And look, everything is coming from England. It's going to happen here. And he said, it's already happening here. And he took me around Greenwich Village and we saw Richie Havens in a club playing guitar with a bongo player, an electric bass player. So Jesse Colin Young, so different, different groups that were starting to use electric guitar. They were starting, this was before Dylan went electric in 65. And there had already been some records coming out with a drum kit or something like that. So Paul and I had a few drinks and we decided let's create an American folk rock band, this equivalent of the Spencer Davis group. And, um, and so Paul was the one who really recruited everybody. He knew, he was, had been living in New York, he knew everybody. And we agreed that the center of the group should be John Sebastian. Who I knew from the Even Doesn't Jug Band. I had played harmonica and sang. And Paul told me Sebastian's writing songs, he's, you know, he's really full of energy. And then Paul put together, added some people, and I came to a meeting. He wanted me to give them a pep talk about they could be stars. And so, um, so we had a meeting at a bar in Greenwich Village. And it was John Sebastian Zalyanovsky and Jerry Yester and a drummer who I think was not the eventual drummer. Jerry Yester was not the eventual, but Sebastian and Yanovsky. And, uh, and I told them about England, you know, everybody loves blues, everybody loves and it's music played by long-haired guys with electric guitars. And so they started rehearsing. And I was, I had to go back to England. And so Paul worked with them. And then somehow the Jerry Esther and the drummer lost interest. They couldn't pay them enough or something. Electra was financing. But and so the group kind of fell apart. But Yanovsky and Sebastian just kept writing together. And eventually they found another bass player and drummer. And they got some manager and got them a deal with Kama Sutra. And by this time Dylan had gone electric and it was all that excitement was happening. And, um, and so they decided before they finally signed the contract, they would make four tracks in the studio for Electra, just as a kind of grats. And, um, and so they went in the studio, they did this, and Paul Rothschild decided that this would be the kind of cornerstone of a compilation of electric blues bands. And I then was hired to go to London, and I said, I'll make four tracks in London with a blues band in London. And that's how I came to record Eric Clapton and Stevie Winwood. And they ended up on the same record called What's Shaking with Loving Spoonful. Four tracks of Loving Spoonful, three tracks of Eric Clapton, so Stevie Winwood, and then some more tracks with Tom Rush, and Al Cooper, and Paul Butterfield. And that was the compilation. And it wasn't that so successful, but it's kind of historic. And that's the story about it. And then, and then when, when, the, when the book, White Bicycles, came out, and it told the story, the drummer, I can't remember his name, but 
the drum. Somebody told me. Oh, this guy Joe, do you know this guy Joe Boyd? And he said, no, I never heard of him. I said, well, he says in the book that he was responsible for starting Bob's book. So he didn't even read the book to see what I said. But he wrote me this outraged email saying, how dare you, I don't even know you, you weren't around, I've never heard of you, what, you, what the hell are you doing? And so I told him the whole story. I just said, look, I'm not trying to say I started The Long Spoonful, I just tell him the story of what happened. Thank you.